In this video, you're going to see a testing session of high time frame trading using my system. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Every week I drop multiple videos for my trading community and academy members where I back test the charts and I follow the different systems. My swing trading system, which I used pre-COVID permanently all the time. And then also the low time frame system, which is more so what I trade nowadays as well. So these videos come out all the time, but what I decided to do today was share one with you that I just completed on the high time frames. You'll get a look into my thought processes while I trade, and hopefully that is going to give you an edge in the markets. Until the Monday coming up, you can still join my Discord trading group on a subscription basis. Now, this is a great place to build market experience, learn from my work, and get involved with a bunch of other traders, many of which are funded. So if you want to see my processes put into action and also network with a bunch of funded traders and other aspiring traders as well, this is the place to be. Do not join if you are looking for signals, but if you want to progress your career, head over to the link in the description and you can join that now. Hello everyone, welcome back to a backtesting video. This one is going to be high time frame, and what we're going to do is go through all of March from a high time frame perspective, following you know the swing trading approach that I've obviously laid out to you in the course and that a few of you are adopting. So what I'm going to do is head back to the start of the month. Um, of March. Now I'm actually going to go back a little bit earlier than that so that we can look at weekly time frames and stuff because if we do skip straight to the 1st of March and then check the weekly we're obviously going to see all of the price action through the week we want to trade. So let's take it back to let's just go to the 25th uh, of Feb. So if we go over here now it's going to be around this point here. Uh, if we then show ourselves price we don't really need our session indicator for this. So I'm going to leave the charts cleaner. Uh, now what we can do is start breaking down the charts from a high to a low time frame perspective. So looking at the daily there, um, we can see that the market has actually pulled up towards that gap. Uh, this is actually from looking at the four hour. This is obviously going to be the basis for a trade because we do have here a lower low and we do have that gap. And obviously, as we know, if we do form a gap in the market, when we fill that gap, we will be looking to sell, okay? Or obviously uh, trade the other way. So basically the way a gap forms is there's been a large movement over the weekend. The market has opened all the way down here instead, because obviously, you know, bearish fundamentals. But because we have this gap, this is treated as a very high probability imbalance. So the idea now would be, we could look for a trade like this. So as we saw there on the daily, I'm not going to go to the weekly because that's going to give too much away. We have come and traded into this, so I would be anticipating a sell-off based on the fact that we've obviously gapped down, showing a lot of weakness, and we've also broken structure. But while we're on the daily, let's have a look at the larger structure here on EURUSD. Now, as we can see, we've got these higher highs and higher lows. Uh, at this point up here, we've formed this high, higher low, lower high, and then lower lows and lower highs have come in. Now, the one thing that strikes my interest here is obviously this daily zone has now been broken. So this is definitely a significant shift in the market trend. And for targets, we could actually be looking at bringing this down all the way towards this low. Now that's because this is just an imbalanced area on the daily. And it's very high probability now that we've broken into this imbalanced area that the market will pull all the way through and trade toward that high probability demand in the low. So high time frame trading is very simple. Okay, it's a lot easier, a lot more simple than the low time frame work that we do. It's very laid back. If you get the trades on, you can simply just run them. You're going to have, you know, lower win rates. Lo I mean, lower loss rates, sorry. But the reason for that is because you take less trades. Um, so you hit less losses. There's less stress, less emotional pressure. But it does require a lot of patience. And it's not for everyone. Some people, a lot of people do like to get in and out of the markets quickly. But just know that is actually going to be a more difficult thing to master than the swing trading will be. There's not a whole lot that goes into this past understanding where the market is going to go and then actually trading the market from point A to point B. So covering then what we've been talking about, um, we do have now price breaking down into this imbalance. As we know, we obviously want to target through that imbalance now because we are bearish. We've had lower low, lower high, lower low, equal high, but then we had that dramatic sell off here with the gap. So what we'd be looking for now is simple rollover and then trade down into there. So there's two ways we can approach. We can obviously go with a sell limit straight in. That is an okay thing to do. Now do understand if you do that, you're going to hit less winners because you're obviously going to, you know, well, you may hit more winners, to be honest, but you're going to hit more losses as well. OK, the reason you'd hit more winners is simply because you have obviously 
more opportunities. You're not going to miss opportunities waiting on confirmation. But you're also going to hit more losses as well because you don't have that confirmation on your side. So this would be a risk entry kind of approach. Obviously, it balances out on its own. We have a 14.2 R setup there. Uh, as we can see, this is the lower low. Then we attempted to go back up. We formed this gap. This is the large basis of the trade. We could also see that before this gap formed, we did hit this supply. That's not too much of a concern for me. I'm focusing on the fundamentally driven downside that we obviously had over the weekend to cause this large market gap. So this would be a valid setup and we could go straight from there. You know, we could also look for confirmation trades. We could go from the low of the zone if we wanted to or the midpoint. The midpoint for four hour and such is normally the best place to go from. Sometimes you'll miss opportunities, but you will get, you know, much better risk reward overall. Uh, this would be OK as well. But sometimes you have to understand when we're looking at four hour zones, the four hour zone is going to be huge and you may end up jumping in with a 70 or, you know, more pip stop loss, which is obviously not ideal when we could cut it down. So generally, you know, as I teach, as I trade myself, I would be approaching this from here. Now, obviously, we'll have to see if it does get tapped in. If we do push towards the middle of the four hour zone. And what we'll also do is monitor for a confirmation trade if this trade is triggered in and if we do get the confirmation as well. So here we've had a tap into the zone. Now, any breakdown from here could be seen as valid. Uh, as you can see, we have this kind of demand zone broken down. The all this imbalance is now filled in. So if we did break down in structure here, we could look for shorts and that would kind of indicate to us that we're probably not going to get retested uh, in on a you know, risk entry trade. So this is going to be my next structure point. See if we do break down through there. And now that we've done that, where would we look for shorts? Well, what I would prefer to do here is focus in this whole larger area. We can see we have this hourly supply. It's been lightly tested there. Another valid entry would also be this point, of course, which some of you may have seen. Um, I would anticipate, though, that the market is going to make a bit of a deeper pullback. So, you know, maybe something like this, where we just pull a little bit further in to that supply to potentially retest some refined zones in the top of this wick, right? That would give us better risk reward. Uh, the idea here is, you know, we're not going to go too low. We're focusing high time frame only, but this is a clear zone we've lightly tested it but we may be due a pullback towards that large wick to retest some extreme areas so let's look at some of these possibilities then we could enter like this uh, if we push higher into the zone what we could then do is you know approach from a new confirmation perspective but i do think here you know we have these higher highs higher lows forming we had a clear higher low here and now we've broken down through that so what we can is look for you know the immediate trade opportunity that we have so for this, we can simply target that larger area. We are trading high time frames here. So looking at, you know, 200, 300 pip targets is not uncommon. You know, we're looking for large targets, larger stops, 20 to 40 pips. Uh, and then we just let the, let the things ride in the background, right? They can take weeks to play out. They can take days to play out. You can obviously take partials and trail as you go, but they're very laid back trades, but they do require a lot of patience. So we have opportunity one here from this supply zone. Now there will also be a secondary opportunity from around here i would probably go with this one but based on you know the logic of this um let me just rearrange this one to the midpoint based on the logic of this i'm assuming that many of you may actually opt to take this one and that is not a wrong move whatsoever uh the reason that i would really want to take this higher one is simply due to my market experience and knowing that you know when we get a big push up like this we are generally going to come and fill some form of refined zone you know how it goes. We've seen it happen a lot. We get a deeper pullback and then a push down. So from market experience, I would personally probably enter from up there. But this one is also valid and also a very nice trade at 8.5 R. So this one may be more realistically the one you would take. And then this one as well. We'll see how it goes for the market experience. So, OK, trade number one is now tagged in. Trade number two is tagged in from the midpoint of the hourly supply. Both trades are now in profit and let's just see how these things roll. So very fast breakdown. Good to see. Now, at this point, we'd definitely be going break even on both the positions. So this position here, we would look at a break even this position here as well. We would certainly look at a break even. What we can do is just let these trades run. Uh, we could obviously look to take some partials now that we'd approach this low. I think maybe somewhere around here would be good. I'm going to go and check four hour and see what we've got going on 
if there's going to be any other clear areas for us to take some profits. So let's see how we actually align with this zone, because if we have hit this area, we may want to look at taking some profits on that. Okay, we've actually pierced that area. So this is where the patience aspect comes in. Uh, and at this point, we can obviously look to take some form of partials on the move, uh, or we could just hold it all the way down. Now, on this first position that we took, the one that I said, from the midpoint of the hourly supply, I probably would take some partials because we are running 5.5R. We could potentially take like, uh, you know, just one or 2% cover the risk and let that keep running. Or we could just let it run all the way down. I'd probably take some partials on that one. Now, this one's a different story. We're at 8.5R full target, meaning we're only at 25 now. There will be no reason to take partials there for me. That's not enough profit. Uh, and this is where that patience really does play a part in these swing trades because you do need to be able to hold trades, you know, long term without worrying about them reversing. Going. And you have to understand that when we take a trade like this, it is a high probability setup, right? We're following the trend here, looking to take this down towards that major target. So on the same way we'd approach a, a small time frame trade, we don't always look to take partials really quick because the trade's gonna play out quickly. But this is just the same, if not higher probability, meaning all you need to do is stay away, right? All you need to do is actually be patient and not get involved in the markets and not actually interfere with your positions, which is something that definitely does take practice and will come in time. But let's see how this plays out now. As we can say, you know, maybe a couple percent taken off this move, nothing taken off this one yet. And we'll just see if this does get fulfilled or, you know, if we are, if we are gonna get taken out. So at this point we are break even, so there's no risk on the positions anyway. Um, now, as it looks right now, we have actually formed a new lower low. So if we consider the trend since we got in, we have high, lower low, lower high, lower low. This is the point where we could look at possible trailing. Issue I've got here is we could see this as maybe a little bit of liquidity and we do have this kind of big indecision candle here sitting just above. So if we trail, I would be a little bit nervous to put the trailing stop anywhere within this price area. I'd really want it to go above. Uh, we could do that now. Let's have a go at doing that because that's going to secure us some profits worst case. Really, if the trade pushes this far, we may as well just get out and then get back in rather than give away all the profit we've made so far. We can lock in an easy one out there, probably around three or four out there, and then see if this trade can progress all the way to targets. Okay, so we've retested supply. We may come in and take the stop now, but if we do maintain the supply, that will be good to see. Uh, this is the kind of area where if you are in tune with high and low time frame trading, you can kind of look for scale-ins within this price action. But, you know, I'm just going to focus on high time frame for now and see if we can go and uh, fulfill that target. And there we go. Very nice. So easy. First setup, nice 8.5R or 17R profit, depending on your entry choice, whether you entered from this one hour supply, which is not bad at all, or if you, you know, used your market experience of refined entries, to go with a slightly higher entry, a little bit more discretionary and a little bit more thought going into that trade as well. But as you can see, very simple stuff. We don't have to worry about noise. We don't have to worry about, you know, choppy action throughout the day. When we're looking at high time frame trades, we can simply find out on the daily and weekly what's our direction and then place our orders and trade to and from those areas. So it's very simple um, and, and, you know, pretty nice, pretty easy to put into action. So that's trade number one. Uh, this has taken us from the 1st of March, I believe it was the 1st of March we started, or the 28th of Feb. Okay, so the 28th of Feb through to the 4th of March. So that's a full week of trading complete um, from Monday to Friday that we secured this trade. But as you can see, Monday to Friday, 8.5R or 17R, very, very good stuff. So although it takes more patience to hold the trades out, and although you're not gonna be getting those winners every single day, you essentially put a trade on, then let it run to a win over time. So what we're gonna do now is move on to week two, three, and four, go through those and see what kind of results we get there. So let's do that. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you found that valuable. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.